Welcome back to Motorblade, guys. Today I'm reviewing what has become one of the most popular motorcycle helmets in the world, thanks to Amazon, the ILM 953. On Amazon, you might just know it as the ILM helmet with Bluetooth, but either way, it has become an incredibly popular helmet. I've used it for about three to four months at the end of the 2021 riding season until it got too cold, but since it's about 10 degrees below zero outside today and about three feet of snow on the road, I'm gonna do the review inside instead of on the road. I've put about 3,500 miles already on this helmet at the end of the riding season, so I think I'm in a pretty good position to give you guys a good review and go over all the features and details and things you'll want to know about this helmet, like the safety rating, price point, comfort features, and if it's a good fit for you. Let's get started. Before we jump into the review, just so you guys know, down in the description there is a link to purchase this on Amazon or directly from ILM if you would like to. Uh, doesn't cost you any more to purchase through those links, but I do get a little percentage back to support the channel if you do purchase through those links. On with the review, full disclosure, ILM sent me this helmet for free to try and test out and review. Just because somebody sends me something for free does not mean I'm going to give it a good review. I have critiques, there are some things I really like about this helmet. There are some things I really don't like, so I'm going to give you guys my honest thoughts and uh, whether or not I would buy this helmet if it was my cash on the line. First issue that arose when it came to me was the box was damaged. I mean, the box was just beat up badly. This little piece right here on top that controls the uh, front right vent was broken off in the box. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, it's just got two little tabs wasn't actually broken, but it had just popped off in transit. So it was obvious that the box had taken a big hit during transit. Either way, not a big deal. It just pops right back in place, functions fine. Uh, other than that, when it arrived, other than the box being damaged, it was okay, and that little piece popped back in. As far as the helmet is concerned, uh, just ignore this little bit on the front here. That's my setup for when I motovlog. I have been doing quite a bit of motovlogging exclusively with this at the end of the 2021 riding season. The most important thing to start with probably with the helmet itself is the safety review. Because I know right there some of you guys might be done. I'm gonna put a link down in the description to an incredible video done by Ryan Fortnine out of Canada. He has an incredible motorcycle channel. If you don't know about his stuff, go check him out. He did a great review on the DOT rating versus Snell versus ECE and why Snell has kind of been the gold standard for a while, but now ECE seems to be better, and why DOT is still the bottom of the pack. This is a DOT helmet. If you're looking for something with a Snell or ECE rating, this isn't it. Most helmets out there from most manufacturers are DOT rated, and you pay more and you get Snell and ECE, but the majority of the helmets out there are DOT. So, now that you understand the safety rating, let's move on to the creature comforts of the helmet. Two vents up top. Activate airflow right through here, which comes out two channels in the rear right here. Works very well in the summertime. I can open it. I can definitely feel good airflow and cooling over the top of my head. Coming around to the front, we have a single vent click here in the front. Open closed. It allows a little air to go right in the front here and up through some perforated holes in the uh, seeing in front of like the nose and breath guard. Looking at the bottom of the helmet, we have a very nice uh, snap, uh, ratchet type buckle rather. Slides right in there, won't come out, super strong. If you pull on this little red tab here, that releases and it will come out. I like that much better than a D-ring as far as quick and comfortable. However, they've done tests showing that D-rings are essentially safer they have a higher strength rating, but it takes like something like 800 pounds or so to break one of these. So honestly, if 800 pounds was put on your neck to jerk that off and break it free, you probably got bigger problems. One other benefit to having a set of D-rings, however, is that it's infinitely adjustable and you always have to tighten it because when you put it on, you have to actually tighten it down and snap it in place. This thing, if it gets loose over time and you forget to tighten it back up, 
well, then you're running with slack. Whereas a D-ring, every time you put it on, you're making sure it's tight to where it should be. So pros and cons to that, but personally, I like the very quick ratchet system. It's easy to do with one hand going down the road if I get on the bike and, oh crap, I forgot to do that. I don't have to pull over, stop, and fiddle with a D-ring. I can just reach up, push that in, and be done. For visors, they do have some alternative pin lock visors from ILM, very inexpensive. Standard visor system, got a little uh, bump in the front you can grab to lift up. Easy to take on and off with the ratchet system. Just lift it up all the way, push in, pops out, back in, push it back in, you're good to go. You also have a internal sun visor with this helmet, which I really, really like. You can bring that back up here. I have used that so many times while riding. I just, it's probably my favorite feature on the helmet and definitely why I choose to use this helmet quite a bit because sometimes I want more airflow in the summertime. So I pull this uh, visor up, but I still want to protect my eyes. So having the sun shield drop down, not only gives me glare protection and protect my eyes from the sun, but protects my eyes from the wind as well, because it comes down pretty far right around the nose. So you really don't get much airflow behind it, but you get more air into the helmet for cooling in the summertime, being able to put this up and still have good eye protection. Being a modular helmet, if we want to give ourselves even more airflow or talk without the chin guard in the way, or even, you know, if you're riding a cruiser and you got a cup holder, you want to take a drink of water going down the road. Underneath of here, we have a chin curtain. Sorry, again, I ignore these wires and stuff. That's all my moto vlogging set up. There's a red button here. We just push that and the whole thing lifts up to reveal our modular helmet setup. I preferred putting it on and taking it off this way because that way I don't have to remove my glasses anymore. Very helpful, very convenient. I really like it being modular. Next feature we'll talk about is the Bluetooth. So Bluetooth is internal, already installed and molded into the helmet when you purchase it. You can see it there. Uh, it's your generic straight out of China, shoved in here, cheapo Bluetooth headset. As far as the audio with the Bluetooth is concerned, when it comes to phone calls, pretty good, pretty clear audio. Audio could stand to go up another notch or two in volume. When I put it at max volume, I can still hear it, but at highway speeds, it's a little difficult. Now that is with wearing earplugs. Um, I just wear earplugs when I'm doing highway speed. Around town, speeds of up to like 55, 60, you'll hear it just fine. Again, could be a notch or two louder. Audio quality is not like JBL or Bose quality audio, okay? Don't expect that. It's your typical cheapo Bluetooth headset. Does it work? Yes. And I think it gets the job done pretty well considering the price point. It will also pair with other uh, Bluetooth audio systems. So if your passenger is running a Cena, I've tried pairing it with other riders Cena headsets and I can talk to them linked up with my headset just fine. Again, look at the bottom of the chin curtain here. Chin curtain does do a lot to help eliminate noise. If you guys weren't aware about that, uh, but in a full motorcycle helmet, a lot of the noise you get from the wind comes up under here and is making the noise back near your ear cups. So having a chin curtain of some kind really helps eliminate quite a bit of noise. And I'd say their chin curtain does a decent job of that. It could be a, a bit bigger, but they did have to make it you know, kind of out of the way so you could still access the button for the modular setup. This also has a FM radio tuner built in. I think I tried it once. I prefer to listen to Bluetooth over my phone with Spotify when I'm riding, have my own playlist. It did pull in the radio stations. It's okay. It's not great reception. I mean, you probably don't have a big antenna. For all I know, the antenna is just that little spot right there, unless they wrapped something up inside of the helmet. But it does okay. Uh, probably better in a city where I am out in the country. Not a whole lot of stations to pick from. I didn't really use it more than that one time just to try it out, see if it worked okay. In the back, we have this old red tab. We can pull back and up on that, revealing a charging port, internal, and internal battery for the audio system. Going over comfort and padding, you have removable cheek pieces in here, two sides, back, and a removable liner so you can wash it. As far as the padding 
pieces are concerned, I believe ILM has some different sizes. So if you need to, if you're kind of in between helmet sizes and you need to tighten it up with a thicker cheek piece or thin it out with a thinner one, I believe they do have that option available. I've had to contact them before about something and they were pretty quick to just send me out a new piece if I needed something. So decent customer service uh, to take care of sizing and fitment needs, at least in my case. Uh, this is a large size for me. I got a pretty big head. Uh, they say a large is 59 to 60 centimeters. That's what I'm reading on that tag. So they have a good sizing chart online. Just measure circumference right around, you know, over your uh, temples. And the size that came for me based on those measurements fit very well. All right, that's the review on the helmet. Let's critique it a bit. It does not have the best seal around the top of the visor. So I was out in the rain one time. It rained really hard. Didn't get a lot of like water pouring in, but I could tell there was some moisture gently leaking through the top of the visor. The chin vent down here, while it does work and I can tell there is air coming in, it's not that great. Uh, I, if they, I don't know what they could do, maybe increase the size of the vent somehow, but I just don't think you get much airflow out of this vent. That's my personal opinion. It just doesn't feel like much is coming through there. This ratchet strap here. Uh, periodically, about once every two weeks, I have to tighten it up just a little bit. It tends to work its way out and loosen itself up. Not a big deal. I always check my strap before I go riding, but just something to note. Additionally, this little tab in the back where you pull this uh, red tab out to access the charging area, while it does kind of stay in there and kind of looks like it's made to go there, it doesn't stay in well. I haven't had it pop out on me while I'm riding, because I can imagine that would be really annoying if this came out was like flapping me in the back of the neck as I'm going down the road. But uh, just walking around or going to the bike, I've had it kind of pop out of there, which is annoying. So maybe a better design could be useful right there just to keep that tab under there a little bit better. My biggest complaint about this helmet involves two of my favorite features of this helmet actually. Sorry about this cord. The modular system and the sun shield. We'll talk the sun shield first. The sun shield, if I reach up here, it's difficult to do one-handed while riding. When I first got this, it functioned flawlessly, like it was greased, it felt really nice and smooth. So if I pull that, it's really hard to do one-handed now. And I have not abused this helmet. I've taken good care of it. I always keep my helmets uh, in their little stuff sack they come with. It did come with a nice cloth sack to keep it in, by the way. I'm now like three, four months into having this, and that is being a real pain in the ass. And it's not just because it's cold in the garage here today. That's being a pain in the ass on the road. So for whatever reason, the ratcheting system for the sunshield started out smooth, started out nice. Now it's not working very well. It's just difficult to do one-handed while you're riding. Good grief, I just gotta reach up here. I gotta brace my thumb under the pad and really pull down. Your mileage may vary. Don't know, yours could last for a long time and not have this issue, could just be an issue with mine. But that's something I'm experiencing, so I wanna let you guys know. The other issue is with the modular piece. If I'm just sitting in traffic, open this up so I can talk to you guys better. If I'm just sitting in traffic and I wanna open this up all the way up here, that's fine. But if I push in on the button up here and I start to pull it down gently and close it, right about here, right about here, I can't get it to go. You're like, it's not latched at this point. If I just lift up on it, it comes right back up. It's not latched. If I really push down, ugh, still not latched. And that's with or without pushing the button up there. To get it to latch, Got to bring it down, almost kind of like holding my hand up here, and I got to bring it down hard. Now it's latched. Something to do with the buckling system or the, the latching system, it's just not smooth and it doesn't work well anymore. Again, like the sun visor thing, this is something that was flawless when I got the helmet on day zero. Worked great, nice and smooth. Now, three to four months later, we're having this issue, and unless I really slam this thing down, it won't latch. It'll get stuck just before the latch. It's not the biggest thing in the world 
if you're just going nice and slow, but if you need this thing latched for safety, which you kind of do, that's a problem. That little quick release there for the helmet's nice. Whew. Had the heater off for a while. Hands are getting frozen out here. Helmet was actually warmer than the hat. So I've given you guys kind of the full review on safety, comfort, features, and critiques. Let's talk about price. 209 at the time of making this video, January 2022, $209 on Amazon. I don't know if that's the exact same price on ILM's website directly. So let's talk about if that's worth it or not. If you're a beginner rider, maybe you just wanna go take the safety course, the MSF from Harley or your local uh, DMV, and you need a helmet. This is a great option. It's inexpensive, it has Bluetooth, You've got the sun visor, uh, it's modular, so if you're sitting there and you're taking instruction and trying to learn, you can lift that whole front piece up and hear uh, your instructor better. It has a lot of nice features. You don't have to fiddle with the D-ring, which for a lot of beginners, they hate dealing with that on a helmet. You're not used to it yet, so having that nice little quick ratchet buckle, you know, those are nice things to have. For $200, it's a pretty good buy if you're a beginner rider and maybe you're not sure yet if you wanna dump the investment into a really expensive helmet, it does have some genuine benefits in that price point. If you're going for the safest helmet on the road, this isn't it, no DOT helmet is. You're gonna pay money for an ECE or Snell rated helmet. However, if you're fine with DOT, which is what most people are riding with anyway, good to go. Got the DOT sticker, it's rated for DOT, no problems there. So, bottom line, What's my thoughts on this helmet? Is it worth it? ILM gave me a brand ambassadorship to kind of promote this helmet. They sent me the helmet for free to talk about it. And I'm sorry to let them down, but they need to make a better helmet. Fit and finish isn't great. You can tell some of these little plastic pieces, there's just like rough edges that were left on them. Fit and finish overall, uh, like stuff back here, this piece not fitting properly. The belt buckle thing coming loose, especially the latching system. Uh, even, even here you can tell it's still not latched. I thought I had pushed that down all the way. Getting this modular helmet to actually latch well and easy instead of starting to suck after a few months. And look, it's latched on this side, but it's not latched on this side now. Ah, there we go. That plus how difficult it is now after a few months just to operate the sun visor one-handed? No. No, no. ILM needs to do a better job if they're gonna take that kind of money. If you're a beginner and you want a cheap helmet, you know, again, I think it has some benefits uh, in that market. If you maybe think you're not gonna be riding very much or you just wanna go take the course, this is fine. I'm a rider that's been riding now for, oh shoot, five years? It's really been that long since I began this channel. Five years going on 2022, this coming September. I demand gear that works right every time, doesn't cause me issues, you know, especially when you dump money into a good helmet. 200 bucks is a lot of cash to some people. It is to me. I don't want to dump 200 bucks into this thing and not have it work. If you're a beginner rider and you like all the features it has and you're willing to put up with some of the inconveniences, just because it's cheaper and you're not sure how much you're gonna be riding or using it yet, hey, Go for it, enjoy it. Uh, I've used it quite a bit, you know, but it's getting to the point where now those three, four months in, it's starting to have these issues. And it's like, well, if I had bought this with my own money, I'd be pissed because now I've got to replace it with something that actually works. So I hope that video has helped you guys if you were on the fence or trying to decide if the ILM 953 Amazon special was the right helmet to buy for you. Hope that answered your questions and helps you out in some way. If you guys enjoyed this video or if you found it useful, please hit that thumbs up button. If you guys aren't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, share my channel with your friends, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. That'll give you guys notifications when there are new videos to watch here on Motoblade. 10 below zero outside, tons of snow on the ground. I'm not riding for probably another two months here at least maybe three, but I will have gear reviews, install videos, and a few riding videos that have just kind of been on the back burner uh, coming through the winter as I edit them and put them up on the channel. So there will be new content coming weekly, so stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
Till next time, you guys know what to do. Ride safe, ride on. I'll catch you all later. Motorblade out. Thank you.